Hello everybody, welcome back. It's Kevin with survivalistboards.com. Let's talk for a couple of minutes about what a Trump presidency means to preppers and for the nation. It means a lot of good stuff. It means a lot of good stuff. We're going to restore relations with England and Europe. We're going to bomb ISIS into the Stone Age. We're going to restore relations and hopefully have good relations with Russia. We don't have to worry about a gun grab or any kind of new firearm restrictions, so we'll be able to continue to stockpile firearms and ammunition, be able to get those AK-47s and AR-15s, and hopefully Trump will import. There was a thing about the civilian marksmanship program. There are a lot of M1 Garands and 1911s, M1 carbines over in South Korea. Well, those wanted people wanted to import those over for the civilian marksmanship program. Obama said no. So hopefully we'll be able to get those firearms over here and get them into the hands of collectors and people who need them. So and then also something that is going to be bad, something that has the potential to be bad is Trump is going to aggravate China. Really going to stress relations with China, which to me I don't care. I really do not care that China acts like they can just control our policies with a whim, just, hey, you need to do this, you need to do that because we've got all your jobs. Well, take the jobs away from China, what do they have? It's not like they're importing our products and consuming them and buying them. What is made here that is sent over there and bought? So, they mass produce our stuff for cheap, send it over here for the companies to make a fortune on. Hopefully, that's, that policy, that policy of sending our jobs to China over, since the 1970s will be abolished. All this started in the 1970s, really, whenever Richard Nixon established relations with China. One of the first companies to move, one of the first demographics, one of the first um, job sectors to move to China was the toy companies, is that you be, used to be able to go and buy these little Hot Wheels cars, and they used to have mark, uh, Made in USA marked on the bottom of them. Then it started being made in China. That was in the 70s. Then into the 80s, 90s, 2000s, with Bill Clinton, with Bush Jr. Senior negotiating GATT and NAFTA. Bill Clinton signing GATT and, Nat, GATT and NAFTA. Continued free trade through Bush Jr., and then Obama signing even more free trade agreements. So, hopefully Trump will be able to follow through with his job promises, get those factories brought back over to here where our young people can find jobs, where they'll be able to go to work at a factory for Apple, making however much an hour, $15, $18, $20 an hour. Well, Kevin, the price of cell phones is going to go through the roof. No, it's not. No, it's not. A few years ago, Apple said they had a billion dollars in the bank. A billion dollars. Wouldn't it be something if they only had... 250 million in the bank instead of five or instead of, instead of a billion wouldn't it be terrible just absolutely terrible if Apple had to pay wages and they only made and they took 750 million dollars and had to pay that in the wages and benefits so there is going to be a phase of where these companies are resistant to moving back to the United States we're going to have our, our entire tax code system corporate tax code is going to have to be revamped. There's just going to be a lot of stuff that's going to have to be done. Remember, Trump is going to have, have to undo decades of, capital, of, of crony capitalism, of globalism. Decades. He's going to have to do, undo decades in just a few short years. Globalists have been fighting for this since the 1970s. Probably since the early 1960s, but I don't have any exact details on that. We know that Nixon went over to China, opened, tra opened relations, and the toy company started moving, then everything started moving. Know that Bush Sr. and Bill Clinton worked on GATT and NAFTA. Clinton got uh, helped get China into the World Trade Organization. All that has to be reversed. Every bit of it has to be reversed in just a few short years. But Good news, absolutely good news, is that if everything goes okay, call your senators, call your representatives, call call your Republicans. Doubt your Democrats are going to do it. 
I tell them to fall in line with Trump, oppose free trade. All free trade agreements have to be abolished. Have to. So, what does this mean for, for preppers? It's a lot of good news. I mean, we're going to be on Russia's good side. ISIS is going to be back, falling back to the Stone Age. We're going to secure our borders. Illegal immigrants who are criminals, who have a criminal record, have been arrested, sent out. We're going to build the wall. Keep them out. Keep them out. It's going to, our national, our stability, national security, our job stability, everything hopefully will just be better. Much, much better. The future of our young adults will be restored where they'll be able to fi find a job. Buy a home, have a pot in every, have a chicken in every pot, truck in every driveway, or a car in every driveway, and a house for every family. And that's what the end goal is: is for everybody, everybody, regardless of race, religion, color, creed, whatever, everybody to be able to live the American dream. But to do that, we have to end free trade, get our jobs back, end this globalism, and protect our economy. If China wants to sell here, let them innovate there and sell over here. And if they want to sell a lot of stuff, hey, build a factory here. A, B, C company or whoever it is in China that develops a new cell phone or a new tablet or a new car and they want to sell here, you have to build a factory here. It's that simple. All right, guys and gals, I'll talk to you all later.